Hello, my name is Brent Halpern, and I'm the Scientific Director of the Ant Horizons Network, and this is our weekly seminar series. Today we have Sananda Brahma from IBM Research and the Almaden Research Center talking about improved language models by decoding the past. Uh, Siddhartha uh, is a, uh, a, a staff member here in Almaden in AI. Uh, his PhD is from EPFL, and his master's is from Princeton. And without further ado, Siddhartha, take it away. Uh, thank you very much, Brent. Um, all right, so uh, today I'll be talking about, so the title of my talk is Improved language modeling by decoding the past. Um, this will be presented as a long paper in ACL in a couple of weeks time. Um, all right, so so it's a the paper is about the simple idea that tries to improve a language modeling using uh, uh, neural networks. Okay, so first. Uh, <coughs> um, to define language modeling, essentially, language by language modeling, we mean uh, an algorithm to assign a probability to a piece of text. So for example, uh, something like Megan likes playing soccer, uh, we want to assign a probability to this piece of text. And uh, the idea is that um, a model that can uh, in some ways understand language well, should assign a much higher probability to uh, something like Megan likes playing soccer to Megan, something like Megan likes playing sushi, which doesn't make sense. Um, so that's the key uh, task of language modeling. Um, so in, in practical terms, so uh, uh, given a corpus of text, and this text could be anything, free text from Wikipedia or news or whatever. It really depends on what you want to train your language model on. Um, we want to train a model using this free, uh, free text so that it generalizes well uh, to unseen text. So when, when the language model is then evaluated on a new piece of text, uh, then um, it should not, in some sense, it should not be very surprised by this new piece of text, right? Because if it could, if it has understood the uh, um, language well, then uh, the the element of surprise uh, with a new piece of text should be less. So that's the whole idea. Um, it's a very fundamental problem in NLP or NLU, and. Uh, uh, most importantly, language models have been shown to be the key ingredient in 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 most modern uh, general purpose models uh, uh, that work well across natural language tasks. Right. So the, um, for example, GPT-1 or Elmo or BERT, these are the core ingredients of of very general models uh, that have been shown to work uh, very well or in in performing. Uh, different kinds of natural processing, natural language processing tasks. Um, so the way, the type of language modeling may differ a bit, but but the key problem is, is still the same. All right. So uh, abstractly speaking, uh, given a sequence of tokens w1 to wn, uh, we want the model to compute uh, or assign a probability to the the sequence of tokens w1 to wx, right? And by the chain rule of probability, this can be broken down uh, as a product of n terms, uh, each of which represents a conditional probability. So uh, w, p of w1 multiplied by p of w2 given w1, followed by w3 given w1 given w2, and so on, right? The standard uh, chain rule of probability. Uh, so this is. So essentially, most modern language models which use uh, neural networks uh, will try to model this uh, this this chain rule. So essentially, it will try to um, uh, construct a representation of w1 to wi, right? And then, using this representation, uh, compute a probability of the next token, right? uh, which is wi plus one. Uh, using a linear layer followed by softmax, and uh, uh, 
uh, that's how uh, the model is set up and then it's trained on uh, whatever piece of text you want to train it on and uh, people have shown that uh, essentially simple lstms or transformers with uh, different modes of regularization can achieve pretty impressive performances in in language modeling and uh, just as a side note the the um, the goodness of, of a language model is measured by this term, perplex, perplexity, which is essentially a normalized uh, uh, probability number. Or it, it can also be interpreted as an ex, the, um, expon uh, the entropy, entropy of, of a new string uh, in an exponentiated form. All right. So, so next to the model so i'll spend some time on on this figure because this has the crux of what a typical language model will do um so so in the center is a lstm block or it could be a transformer block whatever um at at a particular moment of time <coughs> when it's uh, when it sees the ix token here represented by wi it also has a representation of the tokens that it, that it has seen already. That's W1 to WI plus 1. So essentially, we are trying to model one term in the chain rule uh, equation, right? Uh, so when it sees WI, um, it also has a representation of the uh, past tokens. And then we try to compute the uh, probability distribution over the next token. Um, the WI would typically be represented as a one-hot vector over uh, a space of dimension V, where V is the size of the vocabulary. Um, this WI is then multiplied by an embedding matrix, uh, which is a set of trainable parameters. Uh, and this produces a vector of dimension D. Right? And uh, uh, the LSTM hidden dimension is also chosen as D because of one reason. That's because uh, after the LSTM module has operated on WIE and HI minus one, it outputs a new state, right? HI. And then <clears throat> people have shown that by multiplying HI by the transpose of E, uh, which is which would be of dimension D cross V, um, and then taking a softmax over it, we can compute a um, a distribution over the next token. So in general, this second uh, matrix that's multiplied that multiplies with HI could be any matrix, but uh, it has been shown that by um, uh, essentially keeping it identical with the embedding matrix, we get um, better performance than using a, an entirely new matrix, right? So that's called wait time. Okay, so this is how basically uh, LSTM language model would work. At every step, we get a new token, WI. It produces a probability distribution over the next token, which is represented by WI plus one tilde. And then uh, at training time, we, knew, we know the actual WI plus one, and we compute, so we can compute a loss function, uh, loss term, which computes the cross entropy between WI plus one and WI plus one tilde. Okay, um, so there is one thing to notice here, which is uh, which leads to the main intuition of this work. So this block, uh, which which represents one step, uh, one term of the chain rule, <coughs> is highly symmetric. So in uh, if we ignore h i minus one for a moment, uh, what comes in is a vector. Uh, which is a trivial probability distribution, but still it adds up to one. This one hot vector representing WI, all right? And what comes out is another probability vector also uh, over the same dimension, right? So the vector is still of size V, where V is the size of the vocabulary. Furthermore, so there is this input output symmetry uh, at each step of, 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 uh, of language modeling. Furthermore, what goes into the LSTM <coughs> and what comes out of the LSTM are also of the same uh, dimension. And this is by choice. Um, we make sure that uh, the hidden dimension of LSTM is the same as the um, uh, dimension of the embedding, embedding matrix. 
um, so our idea is to so one of the ideas is to exploit the symmetry uh, in order to bias the language model so to exploit the symmetry we ask the following question so is it possible to decode the past the last token that the language the lstm sees from the next token probability distribution so the intuition can be understood from this uh, from the uh, following two equations so suppose the the language model knew what the next token was so for example if in a sentence um the next to the i plus one token was soccer right then there is a higher chance of the previous token being playing rather than uh, it being eating right so there is a higher chance of soccer being preceded by playing rather than soccer being preceded by eating at the same time there's a higher chance of eating being preceded sushi being preceded by eating rather than sushi being preceded by playing so the intuition is to somehow incorporate this um, knowledge so uh, essentially this is this is nothing but uh, biogram statistics of the of, of of the language that we are looking at right so biograms of a language will obviously not be uh, distributed in an independent fashion uh, so conditioned on the next token uh, we can pretty much see with certainty that the distribution of the previous token has is highly skewed towards certain tokens right so we try to exploit this intuition <coughs> um so the thing is at at a particular point of of uh, of the language model that is when it's uh, modeling a particular term of the uh, chain rule it doesn't have access to the next token because that's where that's uh, that's so the last term is being computed against that one that term so instead so we really can't use that uh so but what we can do is use the next token probability that's w <coughs> i plus one tilde which is produced by the model itself as a proxy uh, for the next token right so if the language model is very good then uh, it should the w i plus one tilde will be highly skewed right uh, but since we don't know w i plus one uh, we can use w i plus one tilde as a proxy for for it right all right so what we do is then exploit the symmetry of of uh, of the model right as we had uh, as we have mentioned the forward path going from wi to wi plus 1 tilde has this uh, symmetry right so in goes a vector of dimension v and out comes a vector of dimension v so we retrace the path in the reverse direction so uh, we can think of we can think of in terms of w i plus one tilde being a proxy for the actual token right in that sense the if you multiply it with the embedding matrix e it gives us a sort of a weighted distribution over the um, vocabulary all right this is followed by a nonlinear transformation <coughs> which i'll talk about shortly uh, out comes h i prime which is the counterpart of hi in the in the uh, forward direction and then we uh, uh, sort of mirror the softmax computation by multiplying it with um, e transpose right so the path decoding operation can be a mirror image of the forward flow of the uh, of the lstm the only difference being the nonlinear transformation in the middle so the lstm will have information also coming from the context that's h i h i minus one but in the backward direction we don't have context neither do we want to have context because we are really interested in uh, decoding just the last token from the next token probability all right so this nonlinear transformation is essentially stateless um, uh, in in contrast to the forward direction where where it's stateful of course um so so the equation uh, shows the the exact uh, form of the 
probability of the last token, right? So we have wi plus one tilde multiplied by e followed by a nonlinear transformation. Then again multiplied by um, essentially a linear transformation, uh, e transpose plus a bias term. And um, so that, that gives a vector followed by a softmax that gives a vector over the uh, vocabulary, which is then, um, and so for a particular word, we can compute the probability of the last token, right? Then the thing is straightforward. <coughs> so we incorporate this, this pass decoding operation as a, essentially a loss term and further a, as a, uh, an added term in the loss function, right? So the usual loss function uh, is is the um, is the purple ellipse on the top. Uh, so the next token probability, which is uh, which comes out after applying the softmax function, uh, that so we call compute a cross entropy with that and uh, wi plus one, which is the actual next token. And for the pass decoding operation, we have. Uh, we know the actual pass token, right? Because that's the input of, of this, this stage of language modeling. And we have an estimate of the last token by, by, the, uh, by the pass decoding operation. Right? Um, we can then compute a normal cross entropy term, which we uh, term as LPDR. So PDR stands for pass decoding regularization. And this term, can be used as a regularization term in the normal loss function, which is the LLM, right? Um, in other words, so this is what the final thing looks like. So the pass decoding loss function uh, is defined as this lower ellipse, the cross entropy between the current token and the pass decoded probability. The normal loss function is between the um, next token probability and the actual next token, okay? And the, the combined loss term is then uh, the normal language modeling loss term plus the pass decoding regularization loss term, uh, of course, with, uh, with the weight lambda, which is uh, determined through experimentation. Right? And uh, for the uh, nonlinear part of the pass decoder, uh, we want to keep it very simple because we don't want to um, um, bias the model too much by by introducing too many parameters. So the the only requirement is that it should map a dimension d vector to a dimension d vector. So we we just use a normal um, linear layer with a tan hyperbolic uh, nonlinearity. All right. Um, all right. So this is what. Uh, essentially, the uh, this the, the main main uh, contribution of this work. Uh, one thing is important to note is that this pass decoding operation is only used during uh, training. So the only extra parameters we introduce are the um, ones in the uh, linear layer in the in the nonlinear uh, box, and uh, there is an extra bias term which which is not very important, but um, it does seem to help a little bit. But uh, that's the only set of parameters that we introduce, and really uh, they contribute very few extra parameters to the overall language model. And this is again just used for biasing the model, and, but at, uh, and, and during test time or inference time, uh, this pass decoding operation is of course not required. Okay, now to results. Um, okay, so we tested out our method on uh, four different data sets, both for uh, word level language modeling and character level language modeling. So for word level language modeling, we test it out on two standard data sets, PenTreeBank and Wikitex2. For character level language modeling on PenTreeBank character and NVIC8. Uh, so four uh, data sets. And in terms of models, um, so since this is an extra regularization term, we pretty much follow uh, the modeling parameters of um, this well-known work called AWDLSTM from Merit et al. 2018, 
uh, essentially we don't make any changes to the um, layer uh, dimensions and so on um, um, and okay so there's one thing to note so now there are like two different types of uh, language models which uh, which are important to note so one is uh, using a single softmax <coughs> at the output of the language model uh, but as young et al showed in 20 in a paper in 2017 that a mixture of softmaxes often helps uh, to improve the perplexity of of language models so we try try our regularization on both kinds of models and we'll show results for both of them. And for training, uh, we pretty much use what is done by Marit et al. Uh, we do very light hyperparameter tuning uh, in the vicinity of, of the best hyperparameters that were reported by Marit et al. Uh, one, one important thing is um, the, this, the lambda term, <coughs> so this lambda term was was um, um, was fixed by by con conducting a few experiments. So essentially, we saw that around uh, a lambda of around 0.001 uh, works pretty well um, for for our models. Okay, um, so so the first first thing that we did was to check whether indeed uh, PDR can act as a good regularizer. So what we did was we, so this is for just for the word, word level language models. Uh, we took uh, AW del STM, which is, which is this uh, three layer LSTM everything, but removed all kinds of regularizations because the, the paper uses like seven different types of regularization. Um, and the computer trained it on, on the PTB and uh, Wikitext to training sets and then computed uh, its performance on the validation set. And then we just turned on the uh, pass decode regularization, right? So this is just like a sanity check whether indeed a PDR can act as a regularizer and indeed it does help. Um, so the valid validation perplexity drops from by around 2.5 uh, for PTB and around uh, by about five points um, for Wikitext too. So that's one good thing uh, that indeed PDR can act as a regularizer, uh, sort of confirming our hypothesis. Um, but then, of course, for the whole full fledged model, we use the other drop, uh, other regularizations that are used in AWDLSTM, and I just list them here. But uh, essentially, there are like almost seven types of regularization, which um, um, which essentially target each part of the LSTM model. Essentially, the, there are drop, dropouts on the input, there are dropouts uh, at the output, there are dropouts in, in the recurrent uh, matrices of the LSTM. Uh, then uh, there are temporal regularizations applied to the LSTM states and so on. Um, <coughs> But the authors show that all of them do actually complement each other and help in reducing perplexity. Okay, so so the, now the results. Um, so we tried it out on AW, on on the full flat, the full AW DLSTM model with all the regularizations turned on, and what we see is that um, PDR leads to a drop of around 1.7 perplexity points. Uh, on the test set, and uh, in uh, when AWDLSTM is then um, used in conjunction with dynamic evaluation. So this is this method by Krause et al. where um, where at tests uh, where <coughs> at inference time uh, the some of the model parameters are changed slightly, um, uh, and that really helps in driving down perplexity even more. Uh, in even this case, uh, PDR helps by again around 1.8 perplexity points. Uh, so note that the the two models have at at least at, at test time the the number of parameters is exactly the same because the pass decoding operation is not required at test time. So with the same number of parameters, but using PDR 
uh, we get gains in the perplexity. Right? And uh, with the use of mixture of softmax, uh, that multiple softmaxes of Young et al., the reductions are smaller. And uh, there could be many reasons for this, but one, so we really did not do much of hyperparameter tuning. Uh, for for this thing, so um, the gains might be slightly better if if they are tuned better. Um, so this is for pen tree bank. So at I mean at some point of time these were the best results for these data sets, but of course they have been superseded by now. Um, for wiki text too, the drops are similar. Um, for single softmax models, we get a uh, improvement of around 2.3 uh, perplexity points and with dynamic evaluation about 1.7 perplexity points and um, and for and for the mixture of subtract models uh, we have a slightly lower gain but essentially what we see is that um, we do have gains of around um, for the single softmax models at least uh, around 1.7 to 2.3 uh, around that range um for character level models here things are <laughs> much more difficult to improve i guess um but again here we do see uh, um marginal improvements uh, by using uh particle trivialization but around level of one or one or two percent not not very much um Okay, so <coughs> we did some um, analysis of how how exactly PDR is working. So in this plot, we we essentially plot the negative log likelihood of the fast decoding operation. So this is essentially once the uh, last token of of the context is decoded, that the fast decoded vector, uh, we can compute the negative log likelihood corresponding to uh, the actual uh, last token, right? Um, and if we take, uh, if we compute that and uh, we plot a histogram um, for the validation sets of PTB and the Wikitex2, essentially what we see is indeed uh, the, the, the pass decoding operation can recover quite a lot of information about, about the last token. So essentially the, um, yeah. Uh, just uh, ask. Uh, this uh, negative perplexity, do you compute, how do you compute it? Is it uh, unbiased or is it? Uh... I don't think questions are allowed. Oh, is it? Okay. 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 Um, all right. So, uh, no, this is very simple. So, we, we decode the last, uh, uh, the past decoding operation gives us a probability distribution of the last token, right? And then we simply take the, look at the entry of the actual last token and compute its NLL. That's all. Um, and then we plot the histogram for the validation sets. So what this shows is that if the model is able to decode the last token nice, uh, well, with a fairly good degree of accuracy, then the negative log likelihood should all be you know, skewed towards the left, right? <coughs> And indeed, it, it, it is skewed towards the left. So, th so this operation does make sense. Um, and uh, and about how exactly PDR uh, biases the language models. Um, so, so here is another representation of uh, I'm trying to understand what it's exactly doing. So, what we do here is uh, we look at the next token probabilities. Okay. Um, and uh, compute uh, the entropy and then take a histogram uh, for the PTB valid uh, data set. What we see here is essentially uh, PDR is shifting uh, the uh, entropies of, of the next token uh, probability distributions slightly to the left. So, uh, so the green one is without PDR and the red ones are with PDR. Um, so it's sort of shifting probability, uh, shifting probability mass more uh, towards 
lower probab uh, vectors of lower lower probability. So it's sort of betting more um, aggressively uh, towards skewed probability distributions, which which should help if the language model is in general better uh, or in general good. Uh, so if it if it is accurate, then uh, you know uh, giving more uh, higher probability to the correct token will always is always good for reducing your entropy or your perplexity. But of course, it can backfire if you are wrong. So in general, what's happening is it's pushing the model towards being more um, uh, producing more skewed distributions. And it's doing it in a way so that uh, even overall the the perplexity of the models uh, improve. Uh, so that's essentially what's happening internally. All right. So we did some ablation studies. So uh, perhaps too many numbers, but essentially what we show is that by re removing PDR, of course, it helps. Uh, not to the extent uh, um, that the other dropouts that are used in the model help, but that's sort of expected because the other uh, other regularization terms uh, sort of act directly on the LSTM and its inputs and outputs. And this is more of a, uh, the, the PDR term is 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 more uh, geared towards biasing the language model. Uh, I mean, in, from a different perspective, it's not directly um, affecting the parameters of, of the LSQ. Um, that's pretty much it. So essentially what we propose is a new regularization term for lang language modeling, which tries to decode the last token uh, in the context. Uh, from the next token probability distribution. It introduces very few extra parameters. Um, and yet, um, we showed through extensive experiments that um, across the board, it does help in, in biasing the language model in, in directions which are which lead to lower perplexity terms. Um, as part of future work, so we, we just tried, we just used uh, off the shelf LSTMs and of course, I mean, it would be interesting to see what happens if you use more transformers or whatever. Um, the other more direct question would be whether, so in this, we just use, uh, uh, we just decode the last token in the context. But of course, one could argue that we should, uh, we can decode even tokens even further. I am skeptical whether it will help too much. But of course, that's something that, that needs to be checked out. Uh, but if we if we can if it helps decode more than one token in the context, and of course <clears throat> now the world has sort of moved on on using even larger models to do uh, language modeling like GPT-2 or um, things like that. Um, it would be interesting to see whether for such larger models, uh, re uh, a regularization like PDR can help in any substantial manner. Um, yeah, that's all. Okay, thank you very much. So that I really appreciate it. Um, anybody has questions, please unmute yourself. It's the little red microphone icon at the bottom of your screen. Um, reminding IBMers that this is an open talk and will be recorded in, on YouTube, so please don't ask anything that involves something confidential. So do we have any questions? Yeah, I was wondering, um, does, do you have any of this, this might help better in constrained language, like domain specific situations? I could imagine that, you know, somebody having finance questions or making airline reservations has a more limited vocabulary mm -hmm. and the ability to predict backwards and forwards might be easier. I'm just wondering if this would help uh, in some situations more than just general language. Um, that's probable. I mean, regularization terms typically, I mean, if it's a more constrained language, then I guess it makes more sense not to use 
I mean, too large models because it would simply overfit too much. Um, uh, in that case, regularization terms typically would help better rather than, you know, any uh, free text um, from any domain. So in general, the answer should be yes, that it should help uh, in such situations. Okay, any other questions? Please unmute yourself and go ahead and ask. There was obviously at least one question in, in where you are. Does anybody there have a question? So my question, maybe I just don't know the field well now, but <clears throat> this perplexity measure, uh, you need to use the likelihood function for the for, to measure perplexity, right? Uh, but like the function, uh, when you estimate it uh, with regularization, it's going to be a bias likelihood. No, 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 no. No, but the perplexity is measured by, um, on the basis of the actual likelihood. It's only the. I'm not sure how to compute it. Uh, well, you just compute it using the output of the softmax, right? So that's like one term of the chain rule. So you just simply multiply them. But the, the parameters are estimated through this bias process. Or you no, but the there are two terms, right? One is there is one lang last term with that comes from the uh, the normal language modeling uh, thing, and there is an, an additional last term. So these two are added. I understand, but you estimate the parameters in the likelihood function uh, to regularize uh, maximum likelihood or to yes, yes. unregularize. So then this, this likelihood that you are computing is not a maximum likelihood. The yes, yes. So I'm not sure whether it's okay to compute perplexity using that kind of language. No, but the perplexity is always computed using the actual language, not the regularized one. Okay, maybe we should take the point that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds like you need a chalkboard. Sounds like you need a chalkboard for that one. Hmm. All right. Any other questions? Okay, if not, Siddhartha, thank you very much for the presentation. Um, thank you very much. Ben. I want to remind everybody that uh, we have a seminar again next week. Uh, it's called um, Dialogue Based Interactive Image Retrieval by Wei Wu of IBM Research from the, the NeurIPS 2018 paper. Uh, that should be the uh, <coughs> last seminar for July, and uh, we'll probably take a break through August. So I hope to see you all uh, the next week. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. There's a fire alarm. Okay. <laughs>